Hello everyone, welcome to this video on the Chess AI using the Minimax algorithm. Chess is definitely one of the oldest and most revered games of strategy and analysis in the world. It is a game that I really love playing, it is so complex that some spend their entire lives trying to master it. Nearly 8 years ago, a new player entered the game, one armed not by human intelligence and dedication, but by lines of code on paper written by a computer scientist Alan Turing. One of the most popular chess engines is IBM Deep Blue, which played against the chess world champion Grandmaster Garry Kasparov in a match publicized series of matches in February 1996. Deep Blue was not the first computer program for chess, however, that distinct honor goes to an algorithm named TurboChamp, which was written by a famous British computer scientist, mathematician, Alan Turing in the late 1940s. Since then, they have surpassed humans completely. The top players have ill ratings of around 2800, and the top engines are rated around 3500. The 700 point difference roughly translates to the top human players having 1.7% of chance of winning against these chess engines. The strongest modern chess engine is LCO, an open source project inspired by DeepMind AlphaZero algorithm. Unlike ordinary chess engines, LCO and AlphaZero are based on neural networks and the search algorithm known as Monte Carlo Tree Search. But for us, we are going to explore a different algorithm known as the Minimax and Alpha Beta Pruning. The chessboard is 8x8. To assign the color for each cell, we're simply going to loop through each square of the board and check if the rank plus file is divisible by 2 and assign its color based on that. The classes of our pieces are going to look like this. For the rook, bishop and queen, we are simply adding some sort of offset to get all their possible moves. Now, we just have to place our pieces on the board. You can simply assign it one by one in the board grid, or you can use a fan notation to decide where each piece is placed on the board initially. You can read this Wikipedia page to understand how the fan notation work, but uh, we are not going to implement all its encoding, we are only going to use it to place our pieces. Now we just have to pass the string and there we go, we have our starting position. I added a way to grab and move our pieces and I also added some sort of constraint for the piece to only move on legal squares, which simply check if the square is empty or not and also take into consideration if the king is in check. With that we can easily add the en passant and castle move and yeah. We basically have a basic chess game. To have a basic AI for our game, we can start by creating an AI class and a method that just return a random move from all the legal moves. Although this isn't a very solid chess player, it's a good starter point as we can actually play against it and have some fun. The Minimax algorithm is a type of adversarial search algorithm for generating and exploring game trees. It is mostly used to solve zero sum games where one side gains is equivalent to the other side loss, so adding all gains and subtracting all losses end up being zero. Adversarial search differs from a conventional searching algorithm by adding opponents into the mix. The Minimax algorithm keeps playing the turns of both players and the opponent optimally to figure out the best possible move. There are two actors in the Minimax algorithm, its maximizer and minimizer. The maximizer will search for the highest score as possible, and the minimizer will search for the lowest score as possible. Each player will see the opponent's best move and get the best one for him. Usually, the searching is represented in a tree structure data. And uh, the alpha beta pruning is a search algorithm that seeks to decrease the number of nodes that are evaluated by the minimax algorithm in the search tree. It stops evaluating a move when at least one possibility has been found that proves the move to be worse than the previously examined move. Such moves need not to be evaluated further. When applied to a standard minimax tree, it returns the same move as minimax would but prunes away branches that cannot possibly influence the final decision. I strongly recommend you to watch this video by Sebastian Like, who explained this algorithm properly. 
and uh, I also made this website that gonna help you understand how the minimax algorithm works. It simply shows you the minimax tree of a tic tac toe game. But obviously, tic tac toe is a rather simple game with only 255,168 possible games that can be played. This number is trivial for today's computers. That's why tic tac toe is considered to be a soft game, which means the outcome can be predicted given any state. The game is so simple that we can generate the entire game tree without trouble, whereas in chess there are already 197,742 after just 4 moves and about possible games that could have been played after just 10 moves. But the only main difference with the implementation of the minimax algorithm in tic-tac-toe and chess is that for chess we need an evaluation function. Well, the evaluation function simply gives you some sort of points for each player side. For example, a pawn has a value of 1, bishop has a value of 3, a knight has also a value of 3, a rook has a value of 5, a queen has a value of 9, and a king has a value of undefined. Based on that, we can evaluate the score of each side at any given state of the game. With that, we kind of have our own chess AI. But as you can see, it's not really that smart. It's not taking into consideration some basic chess opening principles. To fix that, we are going to make some sort of pawn smart map for each piece. For example, the knights are much more powerful in the center of the board. So now we just have to add this in our evaluation function and give it a try. As you can see, now it's taking into consideration the bonus map. Its opening is much better, it's really hard to beat actually. Thanks for watching the video. Don't forget to like and subscribe.